happened in New Jersey and cross country. So in New Jersey, as you know, I'm in the state assembly. We're facing a budget, potentially $37 billion, that will have all of our priorities impacted by that budget. Educational opportunity funding cuts is on the table. Lacking pension reforms is on the table. School funding concerns, important to me, on the table. Cuts to women health care, on the table. On a national scale, we're combating potential justice reform issues, dismantling health care, partial repeals, trampling on women's health care and women's rights, and uncertainty daily of where our nation is going. And that's why I hope all of you are here today. All right? Over the last few decades, we've seen a steep rise in the number of women seeking public office. And I was one of them. I didn't need another title. I have my primary title, which means the world to me, and that is one called Mother. Right? I'm also a wife for 18 years, and I had a professional title in the workspace. Didn't need another title. So if you're running just for a title, that's not the right reason. You need to run to make a change. And when we run as women, we establish that change. It's our voice. And we don't have to scream. We can talk just as soft like this. But it's our eyes, right? It's our body language. It's our stature that says these issues are important and we're fighting them for the right reason. So we can no longer resign ourselves to sit in the back seat. We can't stay on the sidelines. The world is still happening and they're talking about things that impact us, that are priorities to us. We have to do something. We should be proud that a record number of Congresswomen and Senators, women, won this past election. Our very own Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman was successful. Those women decided it was time to drive, time to navigate the national conversation on issues important to our community, not simply participate on the sidelines. I heard the question before I got up here on men having a 30 year start, but you've often heard behind every good man there's a strong woman, or beside every good man there's a strong woman, or in front of every good man there's a strong woman. <laughs> So I think we're ready. Time doesn't wait for anyone. No matter when you decide to enter, just enter wholeheartedly and don't worry about the experience another person may have on you. We're women. We can talk our way around it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So we've always had a place of influence, always in society and across cultures, even if it's not publicly recognized or legally accepted. It never stopped us losing our influence, so why should it stop us now? Battles have been fought over women. History has been shaped by women. Nations have been run by women. We often are the impetus of social change, and I can't emphasize that enough. And we understand the transactional politics but we fight for transformational politics. And there is a difference, ladies, am I right? Yes. All we have to do is get in the race. We can't say we didn't win when we never joined the race. One of my favorite quotes is by Shirley Chisholm. If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair, <laughs> right? Bring a folding chair. What do we want? We want folding chairs out everywhere, everywhere. We currently make up half of the nation's population. I told you we're 50.8% of the population. Yet we are still represented by Congress made up of 80% of males. There's room at that table. The same statistic goes for 
representation in local and state governments throughout our country. If any of you ever walk through a municipal city hall or a state house building and you look on the walls, you see the faces of men. You see the faces of white men. There is room on the wall for pictures of each and every one of us. There's room on the wall, ladies, come on. More women must embrace their power to bring about local, national, and global change on behalf of our families, our children, and our communities. How I got into office, I was frustrated. I had ran folks for school board in my town. I ran folks for council. I ran folks, not folks, I ran men, for mayor of my town. Still struggling there, city of Patterson. I've ran folks for freeholder worked hard, volunteered, still didn't see the change that I needed to see. So when the opportunity presented itself for me to run, not for just any office, but for a state coveted position, I pursued that opportunity at the encouragement of my godmother who had worked for 30 years as a public servant. And I mean that in every true sense of the word. She was a social worker by training. She was on the school board. She was on the freeholder board and she had health problems and was scared, scared to retire from the state assembly because she did not see anyone who could share her vision, her passion and the voice for taking care of the least of those, the voiceless, that's what we call them. Talk to me for about two years. No, I'm good. I like being behind the scenes. I like pushing people I wanna push forward Baby, you'd be good at it. I'm good, right? I'm good. Decided to do it because her health was not what it should be and she should not have that fear after serving for 30 years. And I needed to step up and do more, was called to do that and had an opportunity to do that. I'm in Passaic and Bergen counties, had to screen in both counties. When I went for the screening in Passaic County, there were eight men who were all elected officials and I had no title. Did not have an election account fund. I was just there saying, I raised my hand to run and I was the only woman screening at that time. Was successful and got the nod. People had 30 years in office, had coveted and waited for this position to become available and I had the opportunity and the gift, if you will, the gift and the privilege to represent my community and the people of my district. It was not an easy decision because the time commitment, if you're serious about serving people, there is not enough money to cover the time commitment. But short of being a mom, which is the greatest job and privilege that I have and honor, it has been the most rewarding experience that I have had. So if you're contemplating it, don't think too long. Don't overanalyze it. If you have an opportunity to dip your toe in the water, just jump your whole body in the water. Just <laughs> immerse yourself in it. So we need more women. And that means all of you in this room. Let's not spend too much time analyzing what we are, what we don't have, what our credentials are, you know the issues. And you can speak from a point of the fire in the belly with passion about what these issues mean to you and why it's important. And when people greet you, this is the other thing that I learned. Similarly, woman, how's it going? Or when I first started running Shavonda, how you doing? I'm doing great, but this chairman really wants this money from me. I need some money. And I would shake their hand, and even if it was a low dollar amount, thank you so much, that will buy some postage. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. If it was a high dollar amount, wow, you really made my day, I can take care of my volunteers, drop some water off for them, walk with them, and make sure that we're getting our message out. Get a mailer out. I need you to seize the opportunity to become the voice that we need now. Today, more than ever, we often hear that this is the most important election 
that we will ever face for every election since I was 18. Now we know elections have consequences. It's real for us at this time and generation. We're fighting to sustain the progress that we make for our rights, our children's rights, for immigration, all of the very issues, the right to an education that were fought and won, we're fighting these battles again because they want to take them away and say, oh, it's your state's right to manage that. What does that mean? What does that even mean? The folks we send to Congress and to Senate represent our states, don't they? It's time for us to wake up. And in this room, you all are awake. You are taking the time to get the training and the knowledge and the information so that we can go out there and we can fight because this is a different type of fight. This is a lifetime fight. And we can't be complacent in this journey. The good news, we're women, we're built in door, right? We don't get turned around, we're built in door. I wanna give you a piece of advice. I want you to find someone who will stand in your corner. I want you to find a mentor, someone you admire, someone you can emulate, someone who will be honest. For me, those persons were former Speaker Sheila Oliver, Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman, Elise Evans, my mother, Bonnie Williams. Find someone you can admire and emulate. Two years ago, I had the privilege of meeting a mentor who was in my head. Anybody know what a mentor is in your head? Every time I saw this woman on TV, I'm like, wow, I want to be like this woman. And that was Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Yeah. The courage, the, the uninhibited, unabashedly honesty, she could speak her truth, tell you all without an eye. And she has research as the voice that we need as well in Washington today, still doing her thing. And she's been consistent in that fight. So think about the women who are in this space of politics that you feel resonate with your voice and build your alter ego. You might say, I would never do that because that's not polite. We're taught as ladies to quorum, to be respectful, to be mindful, and we can't go too hard, we can't go too strong, we have to watch the language we use. You can say it without cussing, but you can cuss in your mind, right? <laughs> have a couple of those moments. Or find a better word to tell them off with policy. Or what the realities are of the impact of the thoughts that they're having. And no, if a million people go without health insurance, that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. Health insurance does not know, or health care doesn't know Republican, Democrat, or independent. I work in a hospital. Before we treat someone, we don't say, hey, can I see your registered Democrat card? <laughs> can I see your registered Republican card? Absolutely not. We treat you on the basis of need. And that's the same way we should treat each other on the basis of who we are, the content of our character, and us just being kind to humans. So, I need you to push yourselves. Push yourselves further than you've ever thought to push yourself. Over the next few weeks, I want you to review your notes from today. I want you to develop your vision. I want you to think about your strategy, but I want you to do one more thing. I want you to take action on it. I don't want it to sit in the journal. I don't want you to take your red folders and put it on the bookcase. I want you to use it. I want you to go back to it. I want you to reevaluate what you said you were gonna do and do something with it. Your time is now. You have to remember, engaging in politics is a marathon. It's not a sprint. The sprinters, they don't survive in this. This is a time where you need to focus, be vigilant, and committed to whatever it is 
you believe you say you want to do. There's opportunities on our school boards, on our local council, to run for mayor, to run for freeholder, and even for us another one gunner in the state of New Jersey. Yeah. So whether you're a Democrat, an independent, no matter your party affiliation, I want you to get ready to run. In 2017, in New Jersey, there's a gubernatorial race, the full assembly, the full, the full Senate, so that's 80 assembly seats, 40 Senate seats, both parties are up for grabs. If you're elected, has been in that seat for over 20 years and you don't feel that they've been living out your mission and your purpose for your communities, now's the time. Primaries in June, then November is the election. You have to learn the cycles, when to enter. For municipal races, learn the cycles. Some are in May, some are in November. Same for school board. Know what you're getting into. I don't want you to go in there blind. I don't want you to leave here and say, all right, they said run, I'm gonna just pick a seat. I don't know when petitions are due, I don't know what to do. But I'm gonna run because ready to run said run. <laughs> do some homework. And talk to people who are in the seats. Meet with your representatives. I say this all the time. If they haven't been held accountable, hold them accountable. I love for people to call me and say, hey, did you know this? Because I'm going at 120 miles a minute. Full-time mom, full-time wife, full-time employee, full-time legislator, even though it says part-time. So I don't know everything, but if you bring it to my attention, it will be squeaky wheel, gets the oil. It will be in my frontal lobe, my front view, and help me work through the issues. If you're an expert in that, help me. Help your elected officials work through the issues that are priorities. We can no longer sit back and expect that our representatives, because we cast the ballot, know what's on our conscience. It didn't work for us in November. I was talking to people who thought like me. I was having dinner with people who had the same beliefs that I had and missed a whole sphere of people who were feeling something different, did not have a good sentiment about the direction of the company, of the country, or of politics. So what we have to do is talk to our neighbors, talk to the people sitting next to you, behind you, and in front of you, as I shared in the beginning, because they may be from a town that's over 500 towns in New Jersey that you have never heard of, that either have some of the same issues or their issues may be a little different, that you can learn a new perspective and an appreciation for their perspective. My way is not always the right way. And I know we as women, we believe that it should go my way. I do believe that most of the time. But I'm not always right. And with information, I can make intelligent decisions, cast votes for 9 million people in the state of New Jersey that hopefully will have a positive impact so we don't continue to have flight from New Jersey so that our young people can stay here, afford to live here, become college educated here, and work here. And I can take care of my seniors who have built their life here and have house wealth, but can't afford to stay in the houses because of the property taxes. The other opportunity in 2018, we had midterm elections on a national front. I'm looking forward to us balancing out the scales. Let's change the house a little bit. Let's not have one party. Let's change the house a little bit. And in order to do that, in order to do that, it's 300 women in this room. Most of you probably have cell phones. If you're like me, I have over 800 contacts in my cell phone. Reach out to folks. Now's the time, if I haven't talked to you in a couple of years, I need to talk to you. And in December, that's one of the commitments that I made, even family and friends out of state. It's important that we have these conversations because we started getting in our silos and we were comfortable. But now the very future of my children are at stake. The very comforts of my mother-in-law, who's 74, is at stake. I'm concerned, not only concerned, but I'm ready to be active on a whole different level. 
You ever seen a woman with a purpose and a mission? That's some power there. So it's my hope that all of you, all of you, will feel that you have the support when you leave here, will know that you have some additional training skills, a whole nother level to your voice, an ember burning on the inside that becomes an inferno, that you can step out of that comfort zone and get active locally and then on a state level and on a national level. And if I leave you with nothing else, I wanna leave you with this quote by Sojourner Truth, which still rings true today. If the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. <laughs> so, ladies, ladies, there is room on the wall in all of our municipalities, in all of our state houses, and in our national buildings. Let's put some faces on the wall. Thank you.